So welcome back to Third Rate Content. Today we are by the seaside. We're at Clan Dodno, must get the pronunciation correct. And we are going to be doing some filming locations. We haven't done any of them for a while. And it's um, from The Reckoning, starring Steve Coogan, based on the, the book written by Dan Jones. No, it's Dan Davis, actually. Uh, Hidden in Plain Sight, a book I have actually read. I wouldn't say it was a pleasure reading it, considering the individual it's about, but it was very interesting and eye-opening. And of course, it was about Jimmy Savile and The Reckoning, starring Steve Coogan, is the dra dramatisation of Jimmy Savile's uh, life, working for Radio One, top, presenting Top of the Pops and all the other things he did. So I'm going to give a warning to today's video. It does contain um, a subject that may, sensitive subject that may trigger you or um, just, it isn't very pleasant, this, this sub subject, subject matter, but it's real life horror, uh, real life folk horror. And it's something that we should know about to protect good people from these types of individuals, if you know what I mean. And by folk horror, I don't particularly mean the movement. What I mean is folk horror as people will talk of the memories or the stories of this wicked, wicked individual. That's what I meant, to be precise. So anyway, buckle up and I'll see you out here for the reckoning. Land Clan Dudno filming location. Jimmy Savile was born on Halloween 1926 in Leeds, England. He died just two days short of his 85th birthday in Round Hay, Leeds. He had been known well nationally in England for his DJ work and TV work in the 1960s and 70s and his charity work um, Stoke Mandeville Hospital um, volunteering at the infirmary in Leeds and many other endeavours. Immediately after his death, he was praised in obituaries for his personal qualities and his work. And it is said he raised over 40 million for charities. Former colleagues and employers queued up to praise him in Pro TV programmes and on radio. One full year later, an ICV documentary examined claims of sexual abuse by Savile. The extensive media coverage this led to incurred a rapid increase in witness statements and sexual abuse claims against Savile. Though this included accusations against public bodies for covering up or failure of duty, Scotland Yard launched Operation Utree. A criminal investigation into allegations of child sex abuse by Savile spanning six decades. The operation was said to be pursuing more than 400 lines of inquiry based on the testament testimony of 300 potential victims via 14 police forces. The sheer magnitude of crimes and scale of esteem the accused individual was held rocked the nation's psyche. And here we are on Hlandadno seafront. And you had Savile and Agnes in the green car. I've got no idea what sort of car it was. Parked on the seafront near Giaconelli's notorious ice cream hut. And you could see, just move it a bit, you can actually see the Little Orm and the, the houses and promenade in the background, quite clearly. But they're mostly hotels. When I say houses, I mean hotels. So we got the, the scene of Jimmy Savile and his mother, Agnes, talking in the uh, promenade shelter, having an ice cream and a heart to heart. But you might notice the shelter is a little different. 
yeah, you had the sort of post-modernist, futurist, brutalist, sort of concrete block shelter that Savile and his mother were sitting at. And now you'll notice this rather charming wooden open with the lovely light coming through it, natural light, sort of Edwardian Dial. shelter. And um, the shelters have all been coming down, the old ones, in 2024 and being replaced. But I'll just show you the shot uh, from the Reckoning. Yeah, so you would have had the shot of Jimmy and Agnes having their ice cream. Agnes on the left, Jimmy on the right. And you could see the run of the uh, hotels, the promenade going up to the left. And you could see these sort of two hills just leading up to the Little Orm and the break in the housing on the promenade. You can't see it too well because of the Harris fencing today. So we're just going to head up the promenade right up to the top and see if we can find one of the older brutalist shelters so let's go so this is the nearest we're going to get in 2024 to one of the to the shelter that steve coogan and Gemma jones playing jimmy savile and his mother agnes savile were sitting at it is the only one of these sort of concrete structures that remains on the promenade at Landardno currently. Yeah, they're all being knocked down in 2024 and replaced with the, to be fair, more pretty um, sort of Edwardian E style shelters. And as you can see, we really come to the top of the prom here. It's a long way at Landardno. So you've got the shot of Agnes Savile sitting on her own to the left of the shelter with an ice cream and Jimmy pulls up in his creepy green van to meet her. And I think as well as being a creepy vehicle for a awful person, Savile's van looks a little bit like a TV detector van from the 1970s. The, those vehicles that used to apparently detect people who hadn't paid their TV licenses. But it turns out the vehicles were fake, or the equipment on them was completely fake. And Savile was completely fake as well. Everything about him, and worse. So Savile fooled the nation with TV and his personality. And these vans fooled the nation for years psychological operation you could say two operations uh, one being assisted by the bbc and one being run by the bbc yeah they're all being knocked down in 2020 yeah so it's like a little bit of social history as well as our filming locations next time i personally come to land i'd know this won't be here this will be knocked down later this spring and replaced like i said within with the new old style shelters and you got this shot on this authentic shelter of agnes and jimmy having their ice cream and you can see the down pipe behind jimmy the down gutter pipe which is partially still there one in that style it won't be here for much longer Because you can tell it isn't the exact shot because you can see a bit more of the headland. Uh, it sort of stretches round a bit and you can see the bit, the housing just there and then a gap and then the other housing and some hills just to the right. But like I said, it's the closest. We're going to get to the exact structure in 2024 and at any time going forward and just before we leave this location i think this shelter has got a strong 1970s hauntology quality to it um i think it's also its association second-hand association with savile and um, that whole era of the late 70s 
and everything hauntological. I'm just going to put that out here for the record before we leave the site forever in its current 2024 form. As you can see, work going on on one of the new shelters. Of course, Scarborough on the east coast of England, pretty much the opposite, well, the opposite side of the country. We're on the west coast of Wales here. All the coast of Wales is west. But um, yeah, inland Clandudno. Um, and I think Scarborough wasn't selected for the filming because you've got very spacious promenade here at Clandudno. Um, and also I imagine Scarborough had quite a lot of memories of Saville um, and probably didn't want to reignite any of them because there'll be a lot of people in living memory still remember him. Um, so Clandudno, a place with no association with Saville that I know of was selected and it's got that you know superficially it has got that look um victorian edwardian british seaside sort of uh classic look giaconelli's peter giaconelli's ice cream hut would have been just here on this slipway Peter Giaconelli was a third generation Italian ice cream seller and local politician from Scarborough, North Yorkshire. Peter Giaconelli died in 1999, aged 73, and he was buried close to Savile in a North Yorkshire cemetery, which is fitting because some say Giaconelli was a pal, some say an associate, while others claim he was a lover of Savile. After allegations were aired on TV in 2014 relating to Giaconelli and Savile, between 1958 and 1998, 35 people came forward with 32 cases relating to Peter Giaconelli himself. These cases were of the most serious sexual offending. Giaconelli was posthumously stripped of all his civic honours. And like Savile, his headstone has been removed. Giaconelli was played in The Reckoning by Peter Wright. Yeah, and you had those tables and chairs and the sign just to the left tables and chairs on both sides and what gives this area away is the railings on well obviously the slipway and the railings on the left and the right which you can still see today and i think they must have edited out the pier on the left of the shot because you just can't see it on the program of course scarborough pier was wrecked by a storm in 1905 yeah, it was a temporary, well, temporary structure constructed for the filming. There's never been an ice cream hut um, on this site. Yeah, all the ice cream huts and that sort of thing are all up on the pier in Clan Dodno and in the town, obviously. Yeah, and the teenage girl was getting the ice cream off the lad who, who worked in Giaconelli's hut, who knew all about him. Um, right about here with the little arm in the background once again. And again, from the same basic angle, you get a shot of that dreadful individual, Peter Giaconelli, serving ice cream to Savile from his hut. And again, you can see the little arm at the end of the headland in the background. Yeah, and you had the shot of Coogan in front of the ice cream hut. And you can see the palm trees just behind him. And also that sort of orangey conservatory at the front of the light yellow hotel on the far left of that block. Yeah, and there was that, I think, really nice shot, actually. And nice composition. Uh, of Jack and Ellie Savile young girl and uh, 
at Parents, just outside Jack and Ally's Ice Cream Hut, and you can see the World War One and World War Two War Memorial just on the left there, and you see the bollards just coming away from it, and you can see the houses all lit up behind it and hotels. So, Conservative Party Conference, Scarborough. But of course, it's not Scarborough, it's Clan Dodno. Yes, Savile was hanging around outside the Conservative Party Conference, waiting for Thatcher, who he was hoping to score influence and power from, and ultimately, <laughs> no spoilers, he did. Of course, Savile gained political influence and power through his associations with Thatcher and her government. And although it may be easy to think of it as superficial, his relationship with the royal family, Charles, Diana, um, and the senior royals, the Queen and Prince Philip was thorough and he was an often visitor to Buckingham Palace and Prince Charles even dined with him on Christmas Day in Scotland in 1999. And this was at Savile's now ruined Glencoe residence in the Highlands. And other than being a go-between between, between Charles and Diana when they were having marital difficulties and being a counsellor to Diana with the marital difficulties, which is unbelievable considering Savile was never married. And, and then on the other hand, he was given full reign at Broadmoor Mental Asylum. Um, and the actual, he was made boss of it for a while in the 1980s with offenders such as the Yorkshire Ripper, Peter Sutcliffe, incarcerated there. Quite unbelievable. And it's almost like people were saying after Savile was arrested, he was like a evil Forrest Gump. But let's be honest, Forrest Gump is not what he was. Here you can see the actual rock wall behind Savile or Steve Coogan and you could see the sign on the wall that's still there today two years after filming and of course you could see the sort of I think Doric columns of the Espanalade I think it's pronounced just behind the Grand Hotel in Landodno. Yeah I think this was a pretty much the exact angle you could see the wall just coming out almost obscuring the bottom of the sign on the wall and that's the final you got Savile striding out to meet his best bud, Thatch. And he was framed behind him with this column once again. And Coogan walks out purposely, purposefully to meet Thatcher. And you can see, again, the column behind him. And you can actually see the bollards that are there to this day and the road sign just to the right of the one bollard. It almost looks like he's touching it on the shot, but it's uh, just a little bit behind it. And it's Alex Monroe, Monroe Way. But it actually said Wellingborough something on the film. So a nice little detail there. But I can't find a Wellingborough street or road in Scarborough. So you have to tell me in the comments what I'm getting wrong. Margaret Thatcher makes her way out of the back of the Conservative Party conference in Scarborough. And it's really the Grand Hotel. They, they do look a bit alike and in similar positions, each of them. One on the west coast and one on the east coast of Britain. But anyway, they put the sign up over um, the sign that's there now sort of a event sign and coffee shop advert <clears throat> and they obviously removed the Grand Hotel and it was just a shot it was more like right. as Lady Thatcher or just Margaret Thatcher steps out of course Margaret Thatcher played by 
Fenella Wolgar. And of course, Thatcher is with the mayor of Scarborough at this time. The arch, arch uh, disgusting thoughts, basically. And uh, associate of Savile. And he's, because he's within his mayorly duties, these people do seem to get into power quite often. I hate to say it. Um, but yeah, they're, they're standing on either side of the middle railing that's there today. And another shot of Coogan playing Savile. Slightly an upward shot. And you can see the Espinalard in the background once again and that sign. The Reckoning TV programme made by the BBC and starring Steve Coogan was screenwritten by Dan Davis and largely informed by Davis's 2014 book In Plain Sight, The Life and Lies of Jimmy Savile. As a nine-year-old, Davis had attended a BBC filming of the Jim Will Fix It show, which Savile presented. Watching as an audience member, Davis noted the suggestion of menace in Savile's manner. As a teenager, Davis read Savile's 1970 autobiography, As It Happens. He found that the florid language Savile used to invoke its recurring themes of sex, power, death and self-righteousness served to reignite a flickering fear in Davis. As an adult in his professional capacity as a journalist, Dan Davis interviewed Savile in 2004. He also started to collect publications about Savile. He then went on to do a series of interviews with Savile in his home, cafes, at his personal Athenaeum club in London. And his last um, interview with Savile was the year before he died in October 2011. Davis felt Savile just wouldn't give him the full truth and he suspected things about him and it wasn't until after Savile's death and the allegations came out that Davis put this all together with his interviews and um, In Plain Sight was released. But while Savile fooled the BBC for years and years, fooled prime ministers and their security services, fooled the royal family of England and their security services and background checks. He didn't fool certain individuals um, like Jerry Sadowitz, the comedian in the 1980s. He called Savile out for what he was. In the late 1970s, you had Johnny Rotten, John Lydon, call out Savile for what he was and subsequently be banned from the BBC for, for 30 years. And then you had former BBC employee and conspiracy theorist David Icke call Savile out implicitly in Savile's lifetime. So there was people who knew what was going on, including Dan Davis had strong suspicions. Um, but it was just those large organisations Savile just got under their radar. Just what are the chances of that? I don't know. You tell yeah. me in the comments. So thank you for joining me today as we've travelled around Land Dudno, Clan Dudno, should I say. I keep getting it wrong, but I know what it is. I've been coming here years on and off. Anyway, thanks for joining me on this journey round some of the spots of Clan Dudno, following the reckoning filming locations about that awful, heinous individual. Jimmy Savile. I'm glad he's dead and it's not often I'll say that but I've, I mean it about him and I'm glad his associates are dead as well and there you go. Um, so if I don't see you soon I'll see you three times as soon. If you, if you enjoyed today please leave a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell and leave a comment if you want to chat and uh, if I don't see you soon I'll see you three times as soon. Third rate content sign out. Bye bye.